Hey YouTube, this is Shane from, um, you know, Australia again. Student in, um, well, first year bachelor's student in Infotech. So I've just created a guessing game via GUI. Um, took me a while because I had to debug some code, go through some code as um, I'm using a book which is made for Python, point zero, Python number two, and I'm currently using Python number three, shell at the moment. But I'll go through the code for you. This book. Um, it is written for Python number two. I'm currently using it for Python number three, but it's still a good book. Still recommend it. Um, gets your head around how to use Python. Um, so I've already written out the code, so you don't have to sit down there and watch me rewrite code and debug, as that's probably going to be a bit boring. Now I'm just going to go over the code um, I've been playing around with. So first I um, put in an import random code, so this imports um, random, which is basically um, imports the random rad range feature. So because this is a guessing game, so we're having the computer guess between the number 1 to 10 and the human needs to guess what number the computer's guessing, you need to um, import a random, so you can use the random rad range um, module, I think it's called. Um, then I also imported Tinker as TK. Um, that is um, your GUI application interface, so it opens up your GUI graphical user interface. Um, I then done window equals tk dot tk. Um, I'm now creating a few variables to begin in, begin with the um, guessing game. So we got your max number equals 10, so um, my user can guess between 1 and 10. Um, score equals 0, so you always start on um, a score of 0, and rounds equals 0, because you always start on a 0 rounds. Um, we're going to define a function here, so the function we're defining is um, the button click and within this function, um, which is this whole basically loop here, um, you've got your global score and you've got your global rounds. Um, I'll just read up what global means because global is another function. Let's see if I can find it in the book. I know it's be a few moments um, because global is another function. Um, I believe it. Um, this means global. Um, let's go for the book so I can actually find the abbreviation uh, for global. Mm, it's not really in here. Um, anyway, um, and we also got try. I have learnt in class try. Basically, it tries this command. If nothing works, it just bypasses it. So it just tries a command with your uh, try function. And the try has your little um, dot dots. Um, you know, those two little dots, since I'll have you on here, I'll just bring up the name of those two dots, two seconds. Ah, oh, colon, yeah, it's got your colon, um, that's right. Um, so it's got your colon, so you type in try, colon, then you type in guess, um, so the guess, that's another variable, and the guess equals an integer, integer, so integer is like a number, um, and that's in their guess box dot gets. Um, I'll... I believe that's just another module um, which is included in possibly the um, random random module. So you import random and it imports a whole bunch of models modules with Python. It's just the way it's developed. Um, then you got if equal if if zero. So if zero is um, less than the guess um, and less than or equal to. See this little symbol here with the less than and equal. That means less than or equal to max number. Then you got your little colon. The result equals result equals random wage, which is um, you know zero to max number. So this is where the computer decides to say, okay, I'm thinking of a number between one and ten. Now, if the guess equals compares to the result, so that's two equal signs compares to. So we got different you know mathematical formulas here. We got the um, you got your little back key button thing, looks like a back button, and an equal, that means, that stands for equal to greater to, and two equal signs me equals, you know, um, that's a compare. So, to continue from this part section here, if guess compares to result with a colon, your score equals score, which is your score up here, your score evil, so it's the score equals score plus one, so it has a little plus one up here. So you can use Python to do, you know, add one, twos, and three, so it does maths. Um, and, and then rounds equals rounds, which is your rounds here, plus one. Else, say if um, you chose something else, um, so say if you did a put in a number, um, it will go entry not valued. 
valid. So it's not a valid entry. Um, then we got the accept function. Um, still something I want to probably do a bit more into research into how the accept function does work. As um, I'll just have to go through the book again. Um, it's the first time I've actually seen it show up in a book. I don't see what's actually explaining it. Just two fact seconds. And we'll have a look at the accept function. How that um, well, functions. Um, I'll go through the book why before before end this anyway. So we got your accept function and a result accept which entry is not valid. Then you've got your result label config text result um, score label config text equals string. So you've got your string. That's a string command. Str means a string. Um, usually the strings this up to the score. So that's a string to your score. Plus you got um, this um, symbol here. Um, I'll need to do a bit more research on this symbol. Um, I thought it refers to in the book, and you got um, your string and you got your rounds. You got your guest text box delete zero bot tk. So, guest label equals tk label, um, colon window text enter number from one to string max number. So, that string um, is the max number here, so it strings that in there. Um, you got your guest box. Um, which is your guest box tk entry window so this is all gui this is all the information you need to um en enter for the gui so this is actually how the windows display on the gui and then you've got your get guest label pack so you pack it into the gui so i'm just going to read it from the book um <coughs> excuse me and hopefully that will make probably a little bit more sense <coughs> so in the file editor, we first imported the random, imported tk as tk, and um, window as tk. We then did the max number score and rounds. And the next bit of code, um, which I'll highlight now. The ne this bit of code will run when the button is clicked. It works at whenever you have entered a valid number and whether the number or not of your guess was correct. Afterwards, it updates and labels and text boxes on the screen. Um, so that adds that to the program. Now this part of the code here um, ends the button. So as the book says, this part of the code, which is highlighted now, um, that creates the labels, the text entry, and buttons that are used in the, and the button that used in the GOI. And finally, as the book says, um, this part of the code will. Um, well, the book says finally add these statements to your program. This adds the widgets to the GUI and makes the loop uh, one. And then finally, of course, um, well, I don't need that. I've got two button packs there. And then finally, just end the code with a uh, button main loop. So let's run this guessing game and see how it performs. So I'm just going to maximize this so you can get a copy of the entire um, code for the guessing game. And I'm going to press S5, save the code. Um, it's opened up in my other window, so I'm just going to drag it across up here. Here's the little guessing game. Um, I still need to play around with this. I'm still a student, not an expert, mind you. I'm a student like you. Uh, now I'm just saying, now the computer's asking me to guess a number between 1 and 10, so I'm just going to play it safe, and I'm going to say, okay, I guess number 5. The computer guessed number 4, um, so it's not going to, so the computer wins. Computer guesses two. Computer guesses four. Now, say so you can make a game of, you know, betting games, gambling games by doing this. So, as you can see here, I'm constantly. I must have. See, if I press D, it says entry not valued. So, I press the one key. You can only put a number. So, I put in two. The computer was guessing eight. What happens if I put in eleven? Computer don't like that. Computer says no, because um, the computer wants you to only guess number between one and ten. I guessed one. Computer guessed nine. I guess two, the computer guess one, I guess three, the computer guess one, I guess three, the computer guess four. So I've got one in the uh, ten odds. Now it's counting here, so I've guessed correctly once when playing against the computer, but the computer's won 14 times, so one in ten odds, it's not really a lucky day for me today. Um, oh, see I guessed one again and that was correct, so now I've got another two up here. So yeah, that's basically just um, your GOI. Um, what else can I probably show you in here with your GOI? Um, we're going to learn more advanced features of GOIs later. Um, 
let's see here, see if there's anything properly relevant I can, um, well, I've already explained the random, so you've got your import random, and then your import random, um, works alongside with this, so if you don't have import random, this line of code here is not going to work, and this line of code is very important, as this line of code determines, um, the number between 1 and 10, so say if I could change the number to like 100 here in the code, and the computer will say guess the number between 1 and 100, I'll show you what happens if I decide to make things a little bit easier for me. Guess the number between, um, I change the number from 10 to 2. I then close the program, we open it again. So I've just changed one number in a line of code, now instead of saying guess between 1 and 10, it's between 1 and 2, so I've got a 50% 50, 50 chance to beat the computer. So I guess 1, I'm correct. Guess 2, I'm correct. Guess 3, I'm correct. Guess 4, the computer got there. Guess 5, I'm correct. Guess 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 1, 1, 2. So as you can see here, I've just dropped, changed my odds from um, odds in 1 in 10 to uh, odds of 1 in 2. So that's a 50-50%. Just by simply changing the next mon next mon number here. Now because down here in this code, I've got the result equals random red, red range 1 to, you know, max number. It will automatically pick on whatever max number I put in here. So I'll say if I put 2,000 in there, it's going to be a 1 between 2,000. I'm never going to win. It's really high odds. Um... And, uh, yeah, that's pretty much um, all I have to explain. Um, for your convenience, I will see how I can just uh, save this code into a text file for you so you can just view it yourselves. But I uh, just recommend writing it out yourself and just uh, get in this book. Anyway, um, number guessing game. Um, yeah, fun to play around with. All right. I've been doing this all day, so I might have a cider. See you, YouTube.